and then you reverse engineer. Now you kind of are in the mindset of the person you're trying to reach, right? And you also know what are they gonna find when they search this, right? Or who are they going to find? That is where I'm starting to make my top five. Ask yourself the question, what is my consumer searching for? Not who is the most followed influencer, okay? And I'll give you some more context. That's cool. <laughs> All right, so, okay, so the reason why I'm like freaking out about that is because getting more into speaking has been on my like goal list for like the past like two or three years. So thank you to PI Live Miami for asking me to speak this year. Uh, I'm like actually genuinely excited, so that's all. Um, just a quick show of hands, how many of you work directly in like creator influencer marketing? Oh, almost everybody. Okay, so hopefully what I have to say today um, is helpful to you. All right, so um, just to kind of establish while we're here talking about creators, right? I think we all witnessed um, what like this creator economy, like influencers has done for businesses and brands, right? I started in influencer marketing back in 2014. I started in fashion, if you haven't noticed, um, at Gap. And at that time, right, it was mostly like bloggers who were becoming bloggers, right? And I was mostly managing like special projects, in-store experiences, kind of having influencers come and host things. Um, we were kind of doing some Instagram stuff, but like in the past almost 10 years, I'm sure you've all seen it explode. And now like creators and influencers are the go-to um, and a key part of any marketing strategy. Where we are now is creators have become celebrities. But the negative of this whole like creators are celebrities is that now everybody's over it, right? So now every time that you see a sponsored video coming on your page, you either skip it, you don't really care, you know they were kind of paid something to promote what they're promoting, and now you kind of question the integrity of it, the authenticity of it. Can we agree with that? So I think it's making our job as marketers like very, very hard. So I just wanted to give this recap to kind of set the tone for like why I'm talking about creative discovery because I don't think that like influencer creative marketing is going anywhere, but I do think that when it comes to like you know, some brands are so small, they only really want to, they're either questioning investing in influence because they're like, is it going to do anything? Or they can only afford to do organic strategies, right? Depending on the, the size of your company, it really, it, 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 that's going to determine kind of what you decide to do. And I think that learning how to properly, manually um, vet and discover influence that can be right for your brand is important to know whether or not um, you're doing organic, paid, or coupled with both, okay? So what we know, um, is that digital users agree that creators make them more interested in trying a new product. Show of hands if who agrees with that for themselves personally. Okay, um, my stats here, if you want some sources, we can chat after. So over one third of social video platform users say that creator content inspired them to buy something recommended um, on a creator platform. So that alone just establishes that we know it works, right? I think I, I, I can't say that I like all the time shop because of like creators or influencers, but it definitely works in the sense of making me very aware. Um, and then whether I decide to purchase kind of in that moment, if I'm in the mall or I'm out on the street, I can remember, oh, I just saw so-and-so that I follow, right? Um, and then just quickly, the second bullet says, uh, watching creator-made branded content shifts brand perception. So I also find that to be true. I think, um, if anything, when you're looking at social media, I think like overly produced, overly commercial content is kind of penetrating a little bit less. Right? I think that more calm, um, authentic, like real uh, UGC-ish, where it looks like just an everyday person, right? When you think about who you trust for sources, when you want to watch a TV show, or you want a movie recommendation, or you're trying to choose between your foundation, who do you ask? You ask a friend, a family member, right? So I think that's the role that like influencers play in all of our everyday lives. And we're all in market, which we established in the beginning, so we've all seen that there's a huge decline in organic reach right now. Yes? Yes? <laughs> Um, and yeah, so it's become harder to reach as the algorithm shift to best serve native users and not brand marketers. So there was a time where like your algorithm was kind of showing you, uh, not your algorithm, but your, your feed, let's just talk about Instagram for a second. Who you followed is what you saw, right? So if somebody had 500,000, a million, two million followers, right? Chances are whatever they post, like their audience is gonna receive, a, is gonna get that on their feed. But now it's changed to the point where the algorithm said, you know what, no, uh, I'm not saying this is intentionally how they thought about it, but they're saying, no, we're not going to like make this platform to serve brand marketers who are just making a bunch of money off the back of it, right? We want to keep the users happy because they're the ones who keep the platform alive. So instead, the algorithms have shifted a little bit, 
and they're showing you content based on what you're actually doing online. Does that make sense? So before you used to get content delivered to you based on who you follow, now it's based on what you're actually doing online, right? What you're watching, what you're clicking on, what you're engaging with, because they're saying, you know how we all think that our phone's listening to us, right? And the minute I say like Pepsi, and then when I leave this room, I'm gonna see a bunch of Pepsi ads, right? So same thing, like search behavior is really the key in how like the algorithms are deciding, hey, what am I gonna show David today, right? Oh, he was actually looking at white sneakers earlier this morning. Let's make his job easier or his search easier and show him white sneakers for men and all these different brands to kind of help make him make, help him make a purchase decision quicker. Essentially, they're becoming smarter, and I think that some people are kind of annoyed by it. Like my sister, she hates it. She's like, I just said this thing one time. Like, why am I seeing a million ads for that or a million videos, right? But I think it's great. Anybody not think it's helpful? <laughs> why? Why not? Because I, I kind of agree with your sister. Like, I want to make the purchase decision on my own. I yeah. Wanna, you feel like you're being. I think when you're with an influencer. Feels a little bit more again. Okay. I chose to follow that influencer. I care about what they have to say. That's fair. In my feed, I feel like that's it's fair. Not my decision. <laughs> okay, that's fair. But I think the one thing I keep in mind is like these platforms are free, right? So they can do whatever they want. That's I'm so sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> this is a challenge for us. The good thing for the creator though is that now anyone, whether you have zero followers or a hundred or one million, one thousand anyone has the opportunity to get a lot of reach or to be seen whereas for a while i would say like some of the bigger creators were really monopolizing the space and it was just like you know you kind of felt like if I, if I didn't start five years ago like what's the point now right but i think tiktok we kind of saw it a little bit more um linkedin's also really good too but tiktok i think we saw during covid like new people it looked overnight where they were posting something one day and waking up to like a hundred thousand views right and why is that it's because a lot of the platforms are driven by search these platforms really are trying to be like user first or user friendly first. So in the sense of, um, instead of just showing you like the top creators are only kind of favoring that content, even though I know there was a press release that there's a button on TikTok that you can press to make something go viral, but they're trying to make it more fair. So they're saying, hey, listen, as long as like the audience you're trying to reach is actually interested in what you're talking about, what you're posting about, um, what problem that your brand is a solution for, like it will get delivered to them, right? So when I think about, uh, we're in April, we just, it's Autism Awareness Month, right? So knowing that that's like has a lot of visibility right now there's probably gonna be a lot of search around that topic right so if you're an organization that serves uh, autistic or neurodiverse consumers or you just want to put out something to kind of help you know observe it this is the time to like post content with those keywords does that make sense because now when somebody's searching autism autism awareness month content that has those keywords attached to it so this is the first thing that we're going to see does that make sense if i'm giving you the concept that's how these platforms are working. Right now, why is this relevant to creative discovery? Because it allows me, in a way, to establish a creative profile or criteria based on my target consumer's behavior. If I know that moms are going to be searching for Easter baskets, Easter dresses, princess dresses, whatever the case may be during this time, right? What I can do is ask myself the question before I kind of decide who's the influencer that I want to work on my campaign to help drive demand is what is my consumer searching for or going to be searching for during this time of the year? Not who is the most followed influencer, right? I think for a while, that's what the game was, right? We were looking at vanity metrics. Oh, 500,000, a million. Great. Get that influencer, right? But if it's not relevant to the product or again, the time of year, the searching behavior of the, of the person I'm actually trying to reach, like that campaign is almost going to do nothing for me, right? You might be able to improve your boss or reach about your company by saying, hey, we got this big influencer to work with us, and we also pay them damn near six figures, but is it actually going to like move the needle for your campaign or your sales goals, right? Maybe, maybe a year ago even, but today that's getting a lot harder. So my recommendation to kind of start us off with when it comes to the solution is ask yourself the question, right? What is my consumer searching for? Not who is the most followed influencer, okay? And I'll give you some more context. So if I have a campaign coming up, right, and I'm trying to find an influencer, I'm asking myself, what is my target consumer searching for, right? I am a key identifier. That's a mom. I am a single mom. I am a black mom. I am an LGBTQ mom, right? Like think about what are some key identifiers that are unique and specific to your um, consumer, right? 
interested in uh, toys for girls, dolls for girls, um, Easter basket gifts, right? Think about like what is that, like when they're going on YouTube or they're going on Google or they're going on TikTok, like what is it that you think they're actually looking for? I'm looking for movies for little girls, right? Think about that. For the purpose of what, right? Entertainment, for the purpose of Christmas gifts, for the purpose of a birthday, right? Write this script out. So I'm gonna write a couple minutes, like actually write this down, take a picture, whatever is more helpful for you. But he identifiers what you wanna search first, interested in what, for the purpose of what, right? Now, once you have all of those words, that's gonna kind of make up your little keyword bank that I have down there, search those terms. Right, so I, I recommend, like TikTok I think is the most search friendly in the sense of like searching something and then seeing content right away. Search those keywords, right? You'd be surprised what you see. And what I'm trying to point out to you is that when you're looking for an influencer or a creator for your campaign, I'm gonna say creator for today's session. Um, when you're looking for a creator for your campaign, it's better that you actually use words that um, your key, the target consumer you're trying to reach and get to purchase or to be aware of something, it's better to use stuff that they're familiar with, that they're actually searching. That way, um, that when you when you put those in TikTok, again, I'll use that for the example. If I put in um, Easter search, you can even try it now if you, if you don't believe me. When you see the content pop up, right, you'll start to notice like, oh my God, this particular mom, she's dominating under the Easter keyword, right? Or whenever I put in like, uh, girls, dolls, this family for some reason just keeps showing up at the top of the results, right? So if the light bulb didn't go off already, that's the influence I should consider, right? I should consider whoever's showing up the most when I search what's relevant to my brand and my product. Does that make sense? Um, so same thing goes for YouTube, I would say, uh, and then any other brand that, I mean, some, any other platforms you might be using, but I would say your, the best place to kind of test this out would be TikTok, boom, 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 type it in, see which creators are popping up under those relevant words, and that's how you can start making your list of who you want to work with. Does that make sense? All right, awesome. My first step, I would say, is search the top keywords you would associate with your brand and take inventory on what or who is dominating or showing up under those terms, okay? And then you reverse engineer. Now you kind of are in the mindset of the person you're trying to reach, right? And you also know what are they gonna find when they search this, right? Or who are they going to find? That is where I'm starting to make my top five, okay? This mom shows up all the time. This kid shows up all the time under these keywords, knowing that I'm gonna launch my campaign during Easter. I'm gonna launch my campaign during spring break. Ask yourself the question, right? What is my consumer searching for? Not who is the most followed influencer.